Welcome back to our animation analysis. And today I'm going to take a look at Pixar's Inside Out 2. <laughs> it's perfectly timed. All right. Actually, I want to talk about this because of one shot, to be honest. There was one that was really cool. I mean, they're all really cool. But there was one where I thought, that's really neat. I want to talk about this for my students in my class. I might as well get back to the channel and record things and look at things. And as you go, you know, frame by frame, nerding out about things. What I like about this too, especially, is just the, the different characters. Like, that is already a great frame. Why? Because right now I have a, an animation mentor class and academy class going to start and they're all um, advanced acting classes and character stuff. And it's always, we talk about personality and attitude and posing and making sure that your character is not just the default character. Like oftentimes your characters come in in a default pose. Um, you know, sometimes the T pose is not like that. I can't however the arms are, but like classic wise characters are like that. And then the students usually bring down the arms. You know, the character's just standing in a in a kind of what I call the rig pose, like the default rig pose. And then they start animating like that without really thinking about what their personality is. And for this is great because these are all representing different emotions. You can already see how that is the slight tilt to look away as well, right? Sadness, you kind of like might not want to participate. You're thinking about something else, right? They're, they're their own mindsets type of thing. And then you got, you know, like that kind of the, the nervous aspect of it, how the hand pose is already totally different. You can't really see it here. But that is different versus what this character is posed with his eyes. She is obviously the main character, fully engaged, ready to do something that already not as super angry at this point, but still all those will give you a different representation of who the character is. And that's something for everyone watching that is starting a class or is about to, or starting their own shots for students. Really think of in terms of who is your character? What's their personality? Uh, you might even assign an emotion. Like, is that character always happy? Is that character always sad? Is that character always, you know, whatever it is. And it kind of adjust your posing according to that. So it's not the the kind of the defaulty look to that. This, whenever I see this, oh man, what I was watching? I was watching something and a character. Oh, it was, oh, it was a guy on TikTok. There's a guy, I can't remember his name. He always has a mustache and uh, it's a comedian type style on, on TikTok. And then someone in the comments said, you look like Inside Out's dad. <laughs> Dad is back, but that is actually from the first movie. I was going to say, he hasn't changed, he hasn't shaved, but that's from the first movie. Animation-wise, what this makes me think of is all of this contact and interaction. Such a pain to animate, and something else, might as well point it out for soon. This is super cool. Why? Well, it's super subjective. <laughs> I say it's super cool, it doesn't have to be super cool. But it's just very complex, and to make something believable in terms of they're holding, they're hugging, they're squeezing, the contact point, maybe you have control over the hair in your rig, how that might go up. Maybe she gets closer and it pushes the glasses up. Just the physical contact and the aspect of characters colliding, if you if you will, that's not easy to animate. It's such a pain, and I always find it super interesting in, in any kind of shots and in terms of kind of like, like for your reel you want to showcase, obviously you have different shots in your reel. Each shot is going to represent something else you want to showcase. Your first shot might be, all about acting and performance. And then might all be about body mechanics, full body pantomime. And this could be all close up facial acting. And then you have maybe like interaction and weight assignment and stuff like that. And I think something like an interaction shot is gonna be much more complex and show off -y than for instance, a shot like this. Like this to me serves in terms of like a story point. This is an important shot for establishing this, revealing characters, like whatever the, the need is in the movie or TV show, whatever. But on a demo reel, this wouldn't be as complex and interesting subjectively as this, at least to me. Like this is much more complex and you, of course you can make it more complex than something like this. But anyway, now this seems to be new footage, right? He looks the same. <laughs> he never shaves. I haven't seen the first one in a while, to be honest, but 13, all right, this must be new, right? Because she is, she is older. I'm completely telling you how ignorant I am by the duel of all those hand poses. It's cute. Eyeline. I don't know why I'm forcing an eyeline, just because right now I got a note about eyelines. <laughs> got to fix my eyeline. Where is he looking? He's looking somewhere else. He's looking at the chair. Eyelines, eyelines. How, wait, how is he holding this phone? What is going on? Is this resting on a finger? I'm so distracted already. Everything changes. Yes, she gets older, more emotions. But anyway, the shot is coming out like halfway through in when this starts. This, I was going to say, the rendering of this, cut to close up. You should, if you like 
buttons. This is sort of animation related. <laughs> half the people, half the people. 80% already clicked off this video. But this, the renders, kind of like the, the material, the refractions, the lights and all that good stuff. Watch Lightyear again. Lightyear is so cool in terms of buttons. It's cool. I like that movie a lot. Despite, I don't know what people are complaining about. I like that movie so much. And the, the designs, the production design, uh, the lighting rendering in that movie is so great. Anyway, I mean, I already see buttons like that. It makes me think of that. All right. We're getting into... <laughs> That's a good frame for different types of mouth shapes with slight variations. They're all somewhat the same, but they're still not. Again, this all makes... This is also important in terms of just organic flow of making things look just different enough so it doesn't feel copy-pasted. <laughs> I like this guy in the back. <laughs> Wait, is he in a... Wait, they're all in jammies? <laughs> is that his night, nightcap, nightgown? What is he holding? Is that his little sleeping buddy? Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, she does have her nightcap here. That's great. All right, all right. I love this here, that from the, the impact or maybe the stress, all of this is doing that. That's awesome. Anyway, going in frame by frame, you can see some smears, hand poses. I don't know, I say hand poses. I say this, this means nothing. But in my mind, I see this, I think hand pose, I think tangled. Tangled has so many awesome hand poses. I don't know, it's like a weird tangent, but so great. Ooh, see that to me. Here, there we go. So what shot would be awesome for a reel? This shot. Bam compared to where's the other one this one i don't know who did this i'm not saying this is a badly animated shot this is for students like what should i put on my reel that shot versus this one this you got different mechanics in terms of just the weighty aspect of this being super weight you can see there's no bounce on this right this is just heavy versus body mechanics on a character that's going to bounce and scramble backwards it's so great love the offset poses here and then you got the weight too. I love that. Actually, that's actually super cool. I know this is getting into props and sets and stuff. But what I love is this here. You have the weight of this, but then you got the weight of this. And then you got the pull and how that goes from slack to pa -pa, tight. And then how this pulls and whoever animated this. I love it because there's rotation. It's not one axis just pulling back. There's some complexity. So this might point this way, but this cord is probably pointing slightly, you know, screen left, which means it's going to pull that thing over. Oh, it's great. Analyzing stuff like that to me is just exciting. I stuff like this. I like, I like props and sets. Come on. Cool. Oftentimes I give a sit down assignment for my students just to kind of go into mechanics, but you can absolutely do a getting up assignment as well. This guy. Oh, it's a teddy bear. I don't know what it was. It was a teddy bear. <laughs> He's in his undies. I love it. More bundle up. I don't know. Maybe more protective. She's sad and then she wants to be more bundled up. I'm totally reading into whatever. Subjective and these are great. This would be awesome. Like whenever I see something, like this, like, oh, this would be great to animate. Like just the simplicity of it. You still got complex mouse shapes if you want to. Like you can still do facial animation, but then you have just like a fun, cartoony. <laughs> exactly. Sorry, I'm listening to the sound here, which I don't have on when I play this. Also great. Like that for real would be like a moment from this here, right? When you go from one change to, of course, I would love to animate this the door, and I'm weird. But then the walk, it's cute. And I love that it doesn't go into immediately a walk, but there's that little jump up <laughs> into that. And also don't forget contrast, right? It's not just a walk cycle going forward, but over time, body changes. He gets more focused for the task here. Arms go down. That's something else that I mentioned a lot uh, to students. It's just contrast. So you might have someone, what did someone do? I have someone in my workshop who is holding a weapon and they were kind of, I was telling them like, he's thinking about this weapon like as his baby and it was the character in the weapon and it was more cycly in terms of how the weapon was bobbing up and down and i was asking like hey what if you have this but then you end up here it's the same idea but over time the weapon gets close it's almost like more of a, a hug or you can see that he cares about his weapon so much more because it, it starts far away and gets closer so contrast and just even if you're in one pose and the next pose is almost the same. It's like a pose and a sub pose. Like you want to still have some contrast in there. This guy's awesome. <laughs> That's cool too. I love this here. It's not just the walk, but you have awareness. Ooh, look at the camera. Awareness of the environment and then reacting to it, which then pushes into a different kind of body mechanics with a turn, right? There's more to it. That's great. That would be a great um, 
like assignment list here. Reacting to something while walking and adding your complexity of, of space. That's the other thing that I say a lot to the students is use your space so that your shot is not where the character is kind of... That's often too, like the legs are bolted to the ground and it feels like everything is upper body, arms flailing, acting. But it feels like I'm stuck, I'm glued to the ground, I don't want to move. And if you have a character, like move them at least in one axis. I always encourage, you know, more complex axis movement. But this is great where you go from basically background-ish, right, to more foreground-ish. But it's in a diagonal with a turn. It's so much more complex. It's great. Oh, <laughs> ah, sorry. Oh, oh, that guy. I love that guy. Look at him. Oh, that's awesome. I love stuff like that. No, he's Teddy. That Teddy says, I was going to say, is that Teddy going to move? Is he slapping him at it? No, he's going to move. I need to be patient there. Oh, look at those great poses there in between. Oh, great stuff. I love this. Great lines. <laughs> What's his face? Oh, okay. I was going to say, is he going to really like a completely manic? Like, I love this. Oh, here's the shot. All right, here's the shot. After all of this, what is this? Like 11 minutes of me rambling. So the reason why I thought this would be really cool, for many reasons, obviously, to analyze this and talk to this to my students, is that the couple of things. Like, as a shot, this is already great. How she comes in. I love stuff entering frame. This could be, imagine, your demo beginning, if he's not here, and you got your text, name, you know, a character animator, the date, and or like the year at least. Uh, and your socials and then a character comes into frame to do something and maybe maybe this character is already there maybe kind of sleeping in a whatever it is but i love entrances like this cool pose love the sliding this will probably hurt her feet huh it'd be kind of neat to have some debris movement in here i would i would copy paste some pebbles here and have them move and slide it'd be awesome you can see here the what is going on here. is that the fire why is this up here Maybe it's the energy of this guy. <laughs> but great mechanics in terms of you jump in, right? You got a bounce land plus slide. Because it's, again, usually in most animation clips, it's someone just walking, whatever, doing something on, on whatever surface that seems very neutral, right? And you don't really see that often stuff where someone is jumping in, for instance, right? But on this on this slidey surface, this could be ice, this could be whatever, like debris, dust on a on a slippery surface. This could also be swampy and sticky imagine she jumps in and it just the feet just stick and the jump off with feet sticking could be a really interesting way of showcasing mechanics in a way but then you got the scramble of because it's slippery which is an interesting mechanics to go backwards nice lines here and also pulling something then you got weight of pulling something heavy anyway this is not what i want to talk about what i want to talk about is that there is so much fire Right, coming out here. The first time I watch this going, oh, this is cool. She is pulling him, but he is not being pulled over to the side where he might be on the ground here, right? Mouth, eyes, arm, feet here, and she's just pulling him. The force of the fire basically creates force down this way. And that's why when she pulls, he stays pretty much upright and is being pulled like that, sliding on the ground. That was my thought the first time I watched this. And that's just the cool thing to remember for, for any, anybody watching anime, something like this. Like imagine the, what is your character pulling? And then you add the extra complexity of maybe there is, I'm going to say like jet turbine, whatever, like something pushing down here, which changes the whole aspect of pulling. So it's not, again, pull over, it topples and falls, then you just pull something heavy. It's something pulling this way while this is pushing down on the ground. I'm sure that I'm like 300% reading into this, <laughs> but it's great. I love it. Also, hold on. Love this here. <laughs> this guy's no idea. He's completely on phase, by the way. So he's oblivious or he's just super happy. But if you have something that's like that and it's not that kind of character for spatial awareness, I would always consider you have this happening. A, it's heat. It's not just the sound and maybe shock wave of an explosion of whatever you have right whatever is in your scene but that is a an event that you're going to feel and hear so any other character than this guy would turn around and wince and put the head away from the heat you know what i mean so that's something else that i want to that I, i'm i'm trying to 
bringing to the classes where whatever your character is doing, if you have characters surrounding another character and stuff is happening, they might you know open something and it breaks apart. There's something really loud. They start yelling, whatever it is. Make sure your characters are aware of that and react accordingly to it. It just, it just makes it less like copy paste, copy paste characters that just do an action on a cycle, whatever it is, but they're part of the world and they hear things, they, you know, they react to it. Again, in this case, I don't mind just because they are task focused. They don't care that they're breaking things up. I don't care about any of the people here. They just do their thing. Great stuff too here. I love all the complexities of the, the steps, the slight, you know, the offsetness here, the off balance and the lean into this. Love at this, guys. Whenever you have a crouch all like this, you always have to look at the background. Like, what did people put in here? What I would love to here, if let's say you're soon, right? And you're doing a shot where someone is closing something. This could be the trunk of a car, this could be a mechanical thing like this. Once everything is done for like extra fun polishy stuff, imagine you had either wires attached here or like loose buttons. The moment you slam this down, you could have things go and move around. Just for extra cute, nice little polish that is not distracting. Like you wouldn't have something like that big that just flops around distracting from the characters. But you can sneak in some nice high level polishy stuff with prop interactions and when, it, when props move, if that makes sense. Ooh, I like this here. I like that readjustment. Of, All right, I'm done here. Let me readjust my belt. That's also great. Look at that. Scramble into checking what is different. Again, I'm looking at like, what could you do as a shot? Because for me, I'm struggling with this a lot when I do my shots at home, which means like once every couple of years to do a shot. And I tell my students like three to five seconds, maybe five to seven. Don't go longer than 10. There's so much work. I say this and then my shots when I do them at home, if I do ever, ever anything, they're like 45 seconds. <laughs> I, I, I don't stick to what I'm preaching, quote unquote, right? But look at this shot. This shot is, what are we at here? We are 15, 20. Okay, it's three, four, it's, it's a longest shot. It's a good amount, but look what's packed in this. Let's pretend you would replicate something similar. I don't, I'm not saying copy this, but you have SmackDown. This could be something that she, maybe she has to pull down more. That's already a, a weight thing. Then you have a 180 turn and walk. That's already complex enough, right? And then you have a character that is scrambling to go somewhere. So the contrast of more quiet movement versus crazy movement, right? Like big, big mechanics. That's already great to see. And then pantomime thought process of, oh, what's going on? Well, what's, what's different here? I love all this. And it's like the checking, checking up there and turning into like a last moment acting part there. It's great. Yeah, that's really, really cool. I love all this here. All right, and now we have the introduction. <laughs> I would like to show here too. This is a great way of, I think something else I would, It's that's definitely a bit more complex for students where you have multiple characters, A, that's already tricky, and then walks, which is tricky too. But if you are in the more advanced territory, I love this because it's, those are personality walks. <laughs> Such an appealing face with those eyes. Fast look, reveal. Also, what I like a lot in shots is uh, reveals, <laughs> if you can't tell. And just like surprise entrance and reveals. But that's a cute face. That reveals that, which is funny. <laughs> the way he goes away. So again, it's contrast, right? You got that kind of move and turn. Which, funny enough, I don't know how many times for, uh, like for students, we always, and I've been taught the same thing, like to avoid symmetry where like arms are not doing the same thing. And then in movies, uh, TV shows, anywhere, like arms out is symmetrical. I mean, obviously there's a tilt and then here there is a change, but I've been, been hammered this into my brain as a student from my teachers. And then ever since then, and I'm telling my students as well, but you see it is everywhere all the time. It's, I guess, not that important. <laughs> I mean, it has its place. Also, the thing is, if you had every character like in totally you know, like there are only so many poses you can do with four characters. And I think this is a good contrast of, again, this is just enough asymmetry. And this also, his blocky nature, you know what I mean? Gives you this, which to me is more in character versus this guy who's all bendy and stuff. That's also more in character. So this definitely has 
like twinning of arms has is exceptions for sure i love that though it's a good pose there into that move over <laughs> i love this i like again the contrast of big steps small-ish steps right and then her fast steps it's great and then of course you go into the contrast of and again reveal into that face so great tricky too though that's something that i had to deal with on the show i was working on way beyond is covering faces like this you just see the face Very tricky it's almost like you want to move that character a bit to the left so that you see either you see less or see more it's almost a bit weird to just have that black thing here i am backseat critiquing sorry you know what <laughs> last time where was that i don't remember what trailer it was i was I, I rarely give notes on trailers because it's like these are all professionals doing it they all have their reasons. I'm not going to assume that I'm better than any of them. But then last time I did a, a like a, per trailer, I critiqued maybe one or two shots, maybe. And then it was Cody shot. Uh, Cody's an animator, Pixar. He used to be my student. And I say student, quote unquote. He was already so good. Like he doesn't really, there's nothing he learned from me. <laughs> he was already so good. And now that I'm critiquing this, I'm sure this is a shot. <laughs> I'm going to call it. But I love, again, the reveal and then the reveal of this. I love that from... <laughs> that, head, that head is great and then again the the timing is different right fast 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 to slower reveal new character but this guy is anxiety right oh that's a crazy shot too look at this here oh that's great that's bonkers we just turned up with the eye here let's talk about covering covering things but having the timing, it all has to be different, right? They're all reacting to the same thing at the same time. But you still have to have different amount of, you know, just I mean, a frame or two differences. I love this here. Look at that. <laughs> Grabbing the head, pulling back, this character going in between, in front of it, landing in a very clean graphic pose. This is a fantastic shot. Holy moly, love this. How long is this shot? And let's see. And woof. That's not long. See, you don't need a 10 second shot. Do this. <laughs> I say do this. This is so complicated. It's great though. Great posing. Such a great example of posing, reaction, mechanics, back to posing. There's so much crammed into what is like a two second shot. It's great. <laughs> the character comes with its own uh luggage or baggage <laughs> anxiety comes with its baggage sorry i can't help myself i like that stuff i love this here this is too what i saw it first time i love this here it's almost like oh i'm sorry i didn't want to do this i love that handshake there again what i said before um you got your some i mean it helps that the body is lined this way but still these are technically twin arms twin arms twin arms and i remember i had uh i'm not gonna say names but i had a, a funny up a pixar teacher who was railing against w poses he just hated it he was a great teacher though but I, this always stood out when i was a student how he was just hammering down on on w poses and then you are looking at a at a pixar trailer and there's a w pose slight offset in height though. but again like i said like it's not as much as it was hammered in for us way back oh, that's a great walk and great gestures here W poses, twin poses, and the end. <laughs> Wait, it's the end. All right, we still have to have the reveal of all the other ones, the new ones. There was a new one I thought I saw in a tweet, and it was, where is it? Only if this new emotion is somewhat French, and like with like a big nose or something. Come on, <laughs> either you're gonna lean on this or not. That's also, I can already imagine all the controllers on this and the pain of animating this. It's so fun though. Again, also great walk. Definitely looking forward to it. I like the first one a lot. Score is great. I hope we got the same uh, Giacchino as the composer. But yeah, lots of cool stuff. Already a lot to unpack in a teaser only. We'll see what the trailer will reveal. I will probably, to be honest, not look at the trailer. For a lot of movies, I don't look at the trailers. But it's just spoilers. I don't want to know anything. I just want to go in blind. So you may or may not get a uh i don't know why i circled this but a full trail analysis probably not because i don't want to know but we'll see also prop <laughs> prop animation and contrast look at this they all fall down roll over but then you got this guy 
is the only one that kind of magically, magically goes back here. If you think about the physics, whoop, <laughs> that's a magical turn back. But it gives you contrast, but also gives the character room to go forward. I know it's great. Great stuff. I love it. All right. Well, that's that. What is this? 26 minutes, something like that. 25 minutes of me rambling. But anyway, if there's one thing you take away from this, dear students, where is it? There you go. Is that shot. Think of the mechanics, the physics of you're pulling something while there's force applied here. I just like that. And also kind of reinforces the thing of he is so mad. There's so much energy and fire that he, he can't even be pulled out of that pose in a way. You mean like he's just solid, like I am so mad. No matter what you do, I am stuck in that pose. It's great. All right. Well, I'll leave it at that. Thanks for watching. Feel free to subscribe if you don't want to miss any of these. I'm just, I just feel such like such a tool saying all this. It's like your typical like and subscribe YouTube algorithm stuff that you say or do not say. I don't know. Feel free to do whatever you want to do. I'm going to keep uploading new material this year for this channel. And hopefully I'll see you in my next upload.